Hello and welcome to My Nine's Daily Market Dose Corporate Central. Through this new show, we will get you the everyday pulse of the corporate world. From all the big headlines to tracking all the ups and downs of the market, all of it is put right in front of you. So let's take a look at what took place in the corporate world today. The Securities and Exchange Board of India may approach the central government or law enforcement agencies to get information from foreign jurisdictions in the Adani Hindenburg case. SEBI is awaiting details on end beneficiaries of foreign portfolio investors in connection with the charges levelled by the US-based Hindenburg research against the Adani group. The market regulator may refer the matter to in ministries because some offshore regulators were not very forthcoming in providing the information sought, citing private privacy reasons said two people in the case. SEBI may exercise uh, info sharing rights under IOSCO and a memorandum of understanding with the nations. Max Healthcare Institute has moved the Bombay High Court against TPG, the owner of care hospitals, after the private equity firm favoured Blackstone's offer over Max's takeover bid. As per a report in the Economic Times, Blackstone has offered a price that is 15-20% to 20 higher than Max Healthcare's offer. Max Healthcare, which offered 3,700 crore rupees for the takeover, has claimed that there is a breach of their term sheet agreement over a specific performance clause. The hearing will be held on May 3rd. Last week, it was reported that Max Healthcare and TPG have signed deal exclusivity for bilateral negotiations in April. Abey Soy led Max has already given a firm offer to TPG within the stipulated six-week window for a buyout, which also includes an option on the Bangladesh assets. Max had said it wanted to run the Bangladesh operations for two years before making an offer to buy it. The care hospital's valuation was pegged at 5,500 to 6,500 crore rupees. Another ET report had said Blackstone has been the sole contender for care last December after Temasek backed Shear backed out to look into the deal of Manipal hospitals. And Bharti Enterprises and Brookfield Asset Management entered into a 5,000 crore joint venture agreement for a 3.3 million square feet portfolio of a commercial properties in the Delhi NCR region and Punjab. With this agreement, a Brookfield controlled real estate fund will now have an ownership of 51% of the joint venture, while Bharti Enterprises will retain a 49% stake. The spread over 3.3 million square feet, the properties include Worldmark Aero City in Delhi, Airtel Center and Worldmark 65 in Gurugram and Pavilion Mall in Punjab's Ludhiana City. After this deal, the company will retain ownership and operation of its remaining commercial properties which include a 10 million square foot development in Delhi Aero City. Dalmia Bharat Group with interests in cement, refractories, power and sugar and an affiliate company of stressed assets acquirer Pavan Ruya are in a race to buy Kolkata-based Birla Tires, a Kesoram Industries company, undergoing insolvency proceedings. Lenders received two binding offers, one from a consortium led by Stevens Financial Services in partnership with Melrose Creations and the other from the Dalmia Bharat Refractories. The RP who admitted 1,128 crore rupees in claims from financial creditors received over two dozen expressions of interest. It includes Siet, Bain, Piramal, Bag, India, Resurgent Fund, Jindal Steel and Power, uh, Naveen Jindal Company, Bomidala Enterprises, uh, Purnendu Chatterjee promoted MCPI and Himadri Specialty Chemicals. Birla Tires manufactures tires for commercial vehicles, farm vehicles, heavy earth moving machinery, motorcycles and three wheelers. It was demerged from its parent entity Kesoram into a standalone tyre manufacturing company in 2019. Shares of Wellspun India hit a 52 week high of 104.90 rupees, zooming 20% on the BSE in Tuesday's intraday trade lifted by heavy volumes. Last week, the company's board had approved a buyback proposal at 120 rupees per share via tender offer. The stock surpassed its previous high of 89.95 rupees, touched on April 28, 2023. Trading volumes on the counter jumped over 15 fold, with a combined 43.56 million equity shares having changed hands on the NSE and BSE. The board approved a proposal for purchase of 16.25 million equity shares worth 195 crore rupees through a tender offer. The company said that it will buy back shares at an offer price of 120 rupees. 
May 10, 2023 has been fixed as the record date. The management has said that it ended the year on a positive note and for the January March quarter that is the quarter 4 of FY23 Wellspun India's consolidated net profit more than doubled at 125.4 crore rupees as against 52.2 crore rupees in quarter 4 FY22 editor margin improved 361 bps to 14.6% from 11% in the year-ago quarter. Total income, however, declined 2.3% year-on-year at 2,196 crore rupees. The government will weigh an equity infusion and a possible stake increase in the three oil marketing companies, Indian Oil Corporation, Bharat Petroleum Corporation and Hindustan Petroleum Corporation after they submit their capital investment plans which was confirmed by two senior government officials as per reports. The Indian government will consider an equity infusion and possible stake increase in oil marketing companies after receiving their capital investment plans. The capital support for the state-run oil companies will be uh, confirmed and emphasize projects linked to refinery upgradation, emission reduction and similar activities. The government has set aside 30,000 crores in the budget for capital support. The OMCs reportedly prefer a loan or financial grant instead of this. The Supreme Court on Monday dismissed special leave petitions filed by Gujarat Sales Tax Department against Gail. The Gujarat Sales Tax Department had raised a demand for 3,449.18 crore rupees and interest of 1,513.04 crore rupees, treating the transfer of natural gas from Gujarat to other states as interstate sales during the period from April 1994 to March 2001. Informing the same in a communication to exchanges, Gale said that there will be no impact on the financial statements of the company. According to sources, Bangar family-owned Shri Cement is in non-binding talks to acquire between 40% and 72% of Sanghi Cement for an enterprise value of 6,000 crore rupees. Commercial terms that are indicative have been shared and according to the sources, the talks are not exclusive and other parties may be discussing a deal at the same time. Commercial terms may differ depending on the results of due diligence and the talks could end up being fruitless. The 6,000 crore rupees EV includes debt of 1,800 crore rupees and this puts the equity value under consideration at 4,200 crore rupees. Sri Cement could pay between 1,680 crores and 3,024 crores for the quantum of equity stake being discussed at this valuation, not including the cost of an open offer. Rivals such as Ultra Tech, Dalmia Bharat and JSW Cement are said to have held informal discussions for a potential acquisition in the past, but no deal was reached. So that was all about corporates in today's show. Now let's take a look at those market stocks which were in action today and also understand the reason behind it. Stock of Rail Vikas Nigam Limited, a company of the railway department, saw an intraday jump of 10% on Tuesday. The share also touched a 52-week high of 118.30 rupees. In the last one month, share speed has been up by 55%, whereas in the six months, the stock has registered a growth of almost three times. There are three main reasons for this. First, this company has been approved by the Department of Public Enterprises. The company has uh, got the status of Navratna by the government. RVNL is the 13th government company which has got this status. Secondly, this company has got two new orders. Firstly, the company has made the lowest bid for the th three underground packages of the phase two project of Chennai Metro Rail, that is CMRL. Its value is 3,146 crore rupees. Second, RVNL SCC uh, joint venture has, been ma has made the lowest bid for an irrigation project worth 2,249 crore rupees in which RVNL has 51% stake. This project will be completed in 42 months. Technical analysts largely remained mixed on the counter as one of them suggested booking profits at current levels and another analyst didn't advise fresh buying. On the other hand, a couple of analysts also hinted that more upside could be possible. Shares of LG Balakrishnan and Brothers, that is LG Brothers, fell by 8% on Tuesday on April 29, that is on Saturday. The company released its quarterly results in which a decrease of 14.2% in consolidated profit has been recorded. Year-on-year -year consolidated profit of the company declined from 63.5 crore rupees to 54.5 crore rupees. Quarter-on-quarter -quarter profit decline has been even more, which was down 24.5% from 72.2 crore rupees to 54.5 crore rupees. During this period, the consolidated income decreased by 6.4% from 558.9 crore rupees to 523 crore 
crore rupees. That's all on Corporate Central today. But before we wind up, over to some major events and uh, triggers that may impact portfolios and also the market. Let's take a look. On May 2nd, the results of Tata Steel and Ambuja Cements were out. So this may impact the portfolios and the market. Also, switching focus on RIL as the board meeting of its uh, shareholders, creditors on demerger of JFSL take, takes place on May 2nd. Over to global triggers, Europe's uh, CPI inflation figures will be released. And also, that was all about May 2nd, but on May 3rd, results of Titan, Havels, Godrej, Prop, Adani, Wilmer, ABB, Petronet, LNG results will be out. Also, Japan's markets will remain closed between May 3rd and until May 5th. And the decision of a Fed meeting will also come after the market closes. Well, that was all about May 2nd, but on May 3rd, results of Titan, Havels, Godrej, Prop, Adani, Wilmer, ABB Petronet LNG results will be out, so we'll keep an eye on them. And also, talking about global triggers of uh, May 3rd, Japan's markets will remain closed between May 3rd until May 5th. And the decision of Fed meeting will come after the market closes on May 3rd. Well, hope you like this episode of Corporate Central and got your day's highlights from the corporate world. We'll be back with more new updates tomorrow. Until then, stay tuned to Money 9.